Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, Fender had two bass guitars. Now, I know they had lots of bass guitars, but please stay with me on this. One was called a jazz bass, and one was called a precision bass. Now the jazz bass had two single coil pickups, and the precision bass had one split coil pickup. Now then, Fender decided that they'd also create a merged version, a PJ version, which had a jazz single coil pickup and a precision split coil pickup. And they configured them like this. Now then, I've configured my pickups like this. Whoops. Let's get going. Hello there, I'm Dave and welcome to my workshop for another edition, or another adventure with bass guitar building or refitting, whatever you'd like to call it. Now then, in this episode, I'm going to do the frets. I think it's about time that I got the frets in this neck. So that's a job to do. First, let me explain this pickup configuration. Now for that, I need to take you back to episode one of this series of my bass guitar refit. And you may remember that my original intention was just to add a new pickup on the bass guitar. I had the split coils around about the middle there and I wanted to add another pickup right by the neck. And it just occurred to me that this sort of single coil shape would fit in there very nicely. And I had that on my mind when I came to put these pickups in. And I'm afraid having never had a PJ uh, bass guitar or precision bass, um, it never occurred to me that the pickups should be configured round the other way. But in my defence, when I build travel guitars, I like to have a single coil pickup by the neck because I think it gives a nice tones that you get from a single coil. And I put a humbucker by the bridge. So I think this is going to be fine. I'm going to have a single coil by the neck. I'm going to have these split coils by the bridge. And I think I'm done and dusted. But of course we won't know until I plug it in and play it. So you're going to have to hang on to the end of this series to find out just exactly how this thing sounds. Oh well, I've learned something this week. I'm also very grateful for all the comments that you've uh, put underneath uh, last episode's video about what I should do with these pickups and whether I should cover them or not. And I think the overriding thoughts were that I should leave them naked, as somebody put it, because, um, well, apart from anything else, it means that you can adjust them more easily. And if I put anything over the top of this, I'm probably going to ruin the top of the guitar, make it look a bit bulky. I mean, there's some brilliant ideas, uh, putting a, a wooden scratch plate over the whole lot, putting some little moons, half moons in, in over the top of these screw covers. Um, and all of them are really valid and uh, may well work. But do you know what? I think this project is running on so long and I'm hoping that we're getting near the uh, Great Guitar Build Off 2022 soon. Um, so I think I need to get this guitar finished. And so I'm going to leave them naked and uh, we'll see how it looks. Anyway, thank you very much for all your comments. Really appreciate them. And um, I've also had a few uh, guitars for my guitar feature. So this is going to be really great. I'm going to be running them over the, the next few episodes. And um, so look out for those. There's some fantastic guitars coming up. I was really grateful for Scott's uh, Thin Line te Telly last uh, episode. That was a, a fantastic guitar. <sighs> Excellent stuff. Now, doing fret work is quite time consuming and, uh, well, you need to take your time over it and take care over it. So I like to listen to some music. And so I'm going to subject you to 
uh, another vintage track of mine. This is from the album Distant Worlds, which um, uh, I, I made about 30 years ago and, uh, well, produced a couple of CDs for members of the family. Um, yeah, wasn't ever released. Anyway, um, Distant Worlds, it's the title track, Distant Worlds. It's one of those long ones. So sit back with a cup of tea uh, or whiz through it. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoy. Okay, step one before we start, I just want to check that the neck or the fretboard is flat. I'm going to do that with a straight edge and a bright torch. That's okay. That's really flat. Beautiful. Okay. Now then, step two, I'm going to have to do a bit more sanding on the binding here and um, probably, a, probably a little bit more on the back there. Um, I'm also going to have to find sand the fretboard, so uh, I'm going to get on with that. Oh, it's going to be noisy, so I'm going to start the music. Now, it's going to be about 14 minutes long. If you want to speed through it, there's a little control somewhere on your screen that says you can play this video at double speed. But if not, sit back and enjoy. <laughs>
just quickly run through the tools that I used to do that fretting first of all this neck clamp which is a homemade thing and um, there's a link in the description below to the video where I made that then a pair of modified pincers um, I put a piece of wood on the handles there because uh, it gives you a bit more leverage and I just ground the ends to get a nice sharp uh, edge there um, I've got my fret tang filer and a couple of files. Um, sometimes I use this coarser file, sometimes I find a finer file works better. Then to uh, put the fret in the slot, I'm using this bit of a hacksaw blade in a piece of wood just to clean out the slot with a brush. I use this little hammer to start off the fret when I'm banging it in. And I use this piece of oak which has got an indentation in sort of following the curve of the fretboard just to give it a good wallop and hold it in. I had a bit of a dodgy fret so I use these little pliers here just to lift that one out and I cleaned out the slot, put a new one in. Other than that I've just got a couple of neck blocks to support it and this piece of wood with a load of holes in it just to put the fret wire in. And, well, that's how I do it. I think it's worth mentioning a couple of things that I did with the neck before I put the frets in. Um, I needed to do quite a bit of sanding to get the binding down, which I've done. And uh, I also took the opportunity to run a 320 grit over the whole lot with the uh, sander. But I also needed to narrow the headstock. And so I used some 60 grit paper on the band on the uh, spindle sander there just to take that down so I've got it now down to just over 15 which is a reasonable 
size for that so that's done nicely i also took the opportunity to to round the top of the headstock a little just to give it a little bit more shape and uh, i think that looks okay so i think we're okay with the neck for a while need to get back to the body Hi folks, well it's a new day, um, I've come in here to uh, get on with some shaping of the body but before I do that I'm going to get myself a bit distracted. You see, I've got this clamp for the body and it works absolutely brilliantly. The only problem is winding these uh, bolts up is a bit of a pain and I'm thinking it would be a lot better if I had some handles on them. I found this bit of hardwood which I think is a bit of cherry so I'm going to have a quick go at making some handles. Now ideally I don't want them much wider than the head of the bolt. Obviously they've got to be a little bit wider um, but I don't want it to interfere with this board. For the most part um, when I'm screwing these things up it won't go anywhere near the board but there may be a case with a a travel guitar where it's a smaller body where it, it does so um, yeah I'm going to try and avoid going too thick uh, okay let's measure so these are 25 so if I went for about let me see 28 I'll go for 28 so I'm going to cut this into a square block 28 by 28. Not particularly round but it really doesn't matter that much. Now then, can I find the centre? So about there to there. I think that's good enough. I'm going to try going with an 11mm hole in the centre. And I'll just chisel out the rest. I'm going to try gluing it in with some hot melt glue because I only need to just hold it in position. It's not going to take any strain really. So uh, I'll see if that works. I think I'm going to roughen up these edges first though. Okay, the moment of truth. Oh. 
Well, that's certainly a lot easier. Just need to make three more. Of course, it would have been easier just to go for uh, bolts with a head on instead of this sort of roofing bolt top, coach bolt top, sorry. Um, but um, I've got these bolts, so I might as well use them. By the way, I did mention that I'd ruined my blade cutting some laminate flooring and, and I'd had a go at sharpening it. I've actually sharpened it twice uh, and um, while it still cuts, I have to be perfectly honest with you, it's, um, it's at the end of its days, I think, and I don't think uh, the sharpening's gonna do any good. So uh, I'll have to have a new blade. And I did make a video of it, but to be honest with you, because it wasn't good enough, I haven't put it out. Anyway, let's get back to this guitar. I think that was worthwhile spending a few minutes doing. Uh, it's gonna be a lot easier to tighten up this guitar in these, this uh, clamp. Now, as a number of you pointed out, the pickup cavities, are too tight, the pickups are too tight in them and of course any swelling of the wood, especially when I put some oil or whatever I'm going to put on the top on, um, we're just going to just jam them in and that's not the idea. So I think the first thing I need to do is open up these cavities a little bit just to give a little bit more room. So let's have a go at that. Right, I think I've opened it up enough now. This is quite a nice fit, it just drops in and pulls out. And the other two are okay as well. So I'm gonna call that a day. Right, just had a cup of tea and I can put this off no longer. I've got to do a bit of body carving. I have to be honest with you, I'm a bit nervous about this because I've got this thin olive top on top of the oak. No, sorry, it's on top of the ash, which is then on top of the oak. And just not quite sure how to handle this. Let's mark it up. Start with the uh, simple things first. I need a bit of a comfort carve there so let's take that take that down on that corner there now then I, I don't like this straight edge I think it's got to go I think that's got to go round a bit further obviously I, I've got to be careful about the bridge but I'll, I'll check that that's not in the way there and I think I need to do something there, up to there, just to take a bit of weight out of that horn there, because it looks a bit 
it looks a bit heavy to me and again I think on the inside here I need to carve a bit away now they're coming down here this this should be carved back and this is a this is probably the one area that I'm probably more worried about because I think the carving here should be quite deep and I think it should probably go through well you can see I've got an issue there I think it needs to go through almost to the oak so you're going to get the olive and then the ash underneath it and again I think just to take some weight out of there we need to have a, a carve there and well my socket is there so I want it full thickness at that point but coming out of here there's no reason why I can't shape that a bit and then on the back well again I think this needs to to come in a little bit more than it is just take that out there and probably just here as well but keep that fairly simple I think that's going to be okay I've obviously got to tidy that up and tidy this up so I think I've got something to get on with now okay I think I'm going to take this outside and do it with the angle grinder yeah at least start it off with the angle grinder telling you I'm glad that bits over I've got the main carving done and although I've got to fine sand it I'm happy with the way it's looking and uh, I'm happy with the way the uh, ash is showing through underneath the olive top there uh, and it's I've got a little thin strip here as well I've still got a sand round the edges but um, yeah, pretty pleased with the way it's looking. Uh, there we go. And it's looking quite nice on the, on the back as well. So pretty pleased with the way that's looking too. Whew. Well, I think I'm gonna call it a day for this video. And once again, thank you very much for watching. Now, don't forget, I've got the R scoring challenge going at the moment and um, looking forward to hearing your compositions for the, uh, the little film that I put out and um, well yeah should be exciting stuff and don't forget we've got some guitar stories coming up 
in the next few episodes. So I hope you stay with me. Thank you very much for watching and thank you for all your comments. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe and um, the notify button. I'll see you soon. In the meantime, stay safe.